Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review. Action Bronson, Rare Chandeliers, and The Alchemist. Action Bronson is a New York MC who I have been relatively silent on over the past couple years in terms of reviews, mostly because I've, I've, up until this point, only thought he was just kind of okay. Plenty of people have compared his earlier work to guys like Ghostface Killa, but my issues with his music really kind of went a little bit further than that. Beyond the Ghostface thing, his music, to me, in general, kind of felt just merred in 90s hip-hop nostalgia with no real focus outside of just kind of making his music sound and feel old school. Lots of boom bap beats, tight wordy flows, rhymes that are violent and braggadocious. Projects like Dr. Lecter and Bon Appetit really kind of had me feeling just short of being really impressed. And while, in my opinion, Action Bronson in what he would rap about and just how his sound was working out felt kind of one-dimensional, I would visit in with every project that he would drop after that, and I could sort of see in a way that he was progressing. I mean, since Bon Appetit, he's been releasing stuff pretty prolifically, from his tape with Party Supplies, his album with Static Selecta, and he's easily had a couple dozen LP, tape, and single features since then, too. Appearing on tracks with guys like Heems and Smoke Dizza, Rock Marciano and Large Professor, Apathy, Rex, and Mayhem Loren, basically all this networking has made him pretty embedded in the East Coast underground hip-hop scene. He's been building a narrative, a personality, and a name for himself, improving on his flow and his lyrics, and working on more conceptual songs too. His hard work is paying off, and he's even attracting ears from the West Coast in the process, most notably on this LP where he gets guys like Schoolboy Q, Evidence, and of course, The Alchemist, who produces every single instrumental on this tape. Not only that, but I do think Rare Chandeliers is the best project Bronson has put out so far. The Alchemist beats on this tape are incredibly good, and Action Bronson, while he is still very brutish and braggadocious, his usual rhymes about money, drugs, sex, and food are so overblown that they become kind of outlandishly hilarious. Except for maybe a moment of introspection like Eggs on the Third Floor. To kind of head into the instrumental on this thing, they're just <laughs> great. <laughs> the Alchemist is not reinventing the wheel, but he does a fantastic job of setting a certain kind of sound bed underneath Action Bronson. It's got this boom bap hip hop style combined with the kind of instrumental rock and soul, as well as funk, that would usually soundtrack a 70s action film, or like a grindhouse movie. Like with the fat bassy beat, the quick bass line, and the soaring string sections on the title track. Or the track The Symbols, which has this just really awesome guitar solo flowing throughout it. There's this warm bass line, this pretty epic background chorus with some nice old school vintage reverb on it. The song, the beat, sounds like a back alley fight in like a Charles Bronson movie. The track Sylvester Lundgren has some very sharp, hard hitting drums with some eerie tones kind of hanging very sparsely in the background. It feels like a little bit of RZA worship. And the jazz fusion melody and just syncopated rhythms on the track Dem 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 Demolition Man. It's just pure ear candy. Melodic beauty catches my ears right off the bat. The introduction of the track Eggs on the floor is just very ominous, it's very spacious. I love the way the piano and the guitar intertwine on that track, and there's, you know, kind of like a little bit of you know, as percussion in the background, a little bit of triangle. Sort of reminds me of another track on Blue Chips that I loved especially because it didn't have a heavy beat in the background. You have Action Bronson riding the tempo of the track, but just to hear him over a track doesn't have a strong hip-hop rhythm, to me is sort of breaking a rule, feels a little unconventional. And I love how Action's lyrics on that track feel very paranoid, very introspective. It really fits the tone of the instrumental. And the instrumental for Bitch I Deserve You has these really pretty piano embellishments. I love the way that the horns feel very moody on that track as well. And kind of, It's just one great instrumental after another. For sure you're going to have favorites, but I don't think there's a moment 
even one time on this LP where he falters in a big way. Now as far as Action Bronson goes, most of his lyrics on this LP go toward painting the picture of just this vintage, powerful, ass-kicking dude. Basically a dude that is living within and able to do whatever he wants in his own exploitation film fantasy. Money gets stolen, salads get tossed, there's puke on the floor, there are big meals being cooked, a four-year-old boy is, is getting slept with by a prostitute, and enemies are getting murked. It's kind of cheap, but very self-aware about it cartoony in a way. And though a lot of what Action says is kind of thrown in there for a cheap thrill, where he actually ends up impressing and, you know, I kind of came to the realization that, you know, it is cheap thrills, but it's not done cheaply, is in just the vivid detail Action Bronson goes into when explaining some of these situations, painting some of these pictures. Like an instance on the title track where he's doing a backflip, he lands on one foot and he has a gun like ready to fire. Or a moment on another track where he's got a duck, he snaps the neck, puts it on a plate, roasts it, snaps his fingers, then a waiter comes, pours the wine. It kind of paints an extravagant picture that to me I actually think Rick Ross in a lot of ways tries to paint, but Action Bronson comes off so much more entertaining and charismatic and, and funny. He doesn't really take himself all that seriously on this LP, and I don't think he looks for the listeners to either, but still, despite that, he comes off as being very real and authentic because because even though, yeah, it's just make-believe on this album, he says a lot of what he says passionately, like as if he really would be doing these things if he could sort of live out this fantasy in real life. And pretty much all the features on this LP, I can't really complain about any of them. They all bring and enhance the gritty aesthetic. Everybody from Rock Marciano to Schoolboy Q, Mayhem Loren, Evidence, Styles P, Sean P P P Price, and more. I guess one more thing I want to note about this LP is that some tracks on here are kind of too parters. There can be this beat change that comes out of nowhere and totally switches the track up. So in a way you're kind of getting two shorter songs within one song. Some of these transitions go over well, some don't. A few songs on here are just around two minutes and I wish they were fleshed out a bit more, kind of brought to a head. But still most of the songs on here do have tight choruses, tight verses. They're catchy, memorable, have a lot of personality. And I like the overall theme that Action Bronson is able to execute on this album. LP. But in short, I mean, if you look at this cover, you pretty much get auditorially what is on this cover. If you want to hear this cover, then listen to this mixtape. And that's it. I actually think this is one of the best mixtapes I've listened to all year, period. I'm feeling a decent to strong eight on this thing. What did you think if you've given it a listen? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? And what should I Review next, Anthony Fantano, Action Bronzolino, Forever. Forever.